We're attaching our acrylic panels. We're also designing and cutting out our custom frame panels and continuing on making more progress on the aesthetics of this build. So let's go. Last time I was rushing a bit and I made a mistake with the measurements of this little battery meter but I managed to trim that out so it actually fits in the panel now. With all the panels cut out all I have to do now is conform and bend them around to the shape of the frame. I am taking a bit of time at this part because there is a point if you put too much heat into the plastic it starts getting really melty. And since I really don't want to have to redo all of these panels I would figured I'd rather go slower and and get it right to the point where it's starting to bend instead of going too far and then possibly ruining the panel. I don't bend acrylic all that much and I had quite a bit of bending to do so using these little clamps helped a lot. I was pretty surprised at how much heat it took to start bending these panels. I was going back and forth quite a bit trying to heat everything evenly along the bend line. But once you get enough heat in the plastic it does start softening pretty quickly and then you can make your bends. I did run into an issue because I made this top panel a little too long and it's interfering with this little rib piece that I made. So I'll have to put this part aside because I can't actually bend it in place until I have it the appropriate size but I'll take care of that later. The next side panels were a bit more tricky because it's not just a flat bend it does kind of curve inwards. Again these clamps came in super handy and they allowed me to put more and more pressure on all of the different bends that I needed to make. It took me a few passes to get the technique down but once I had kind of a rhythm these panels conform very well to the underlying structure. After getting the initial bend I wasn't quite happy with how closely it was conforming to it so all I did was keep applying more heat and pressure and clamping it and eventually I got it to where I was pretty happy with it. Because the plastic is so thick it's never going to be like a heat shrink conformance to it and I don't really want it to look like that. I just wanted to kind of follow along the forms. And once I finished up with that side all I had to do was repeat the process for the other side and of course it went a lot faster because I already kind of knew what I was doing. Once I had the panels fitting up pretty nicely, the next thing I had to tackle was getting them to permanently mount to the frame. I actually came up with a bunch of different options for how I was going to mount these panels. I could have glued them, I could have used double stick tape, I could have used velcro. If I can, I always try to shy away from using adhesives if there is another method that I can use like screws. I did buy some riv nuts and I did think of using those in place of just drilling and tapping the holes, but the riv nuts are quite a bit bigger and I wanted these to be a little more discreet. I do have a tap but I unfortunately broke it so the method I've been using these days is just using a screw and using that to cut the threads. I know I should buy a new tap set but this has actually been working out pretty well for me so I've just been doing it and if it works it works. I know it's not how you're supposed to do it but I haven't had any problems so far and this is my method for making threads. I first tried using some stainless steel screws but the black oxide hardened ones are actually going to be a lot better and the threads are going to hold up more while you're cutting through the steel. The holes don't look perfectly aligned and that is because even though the panels are perfectly symmetrical my handmade frame parts are not. That's the reason why I use the panels as a guide because that's how I want 
wanted the holes to line up and it worked out fine even though they're not perfectly symmetrical. I was trying to get all these panels fully mounted by the end of this video but because I ran into that little clearance problem with my top piece I am going to have to wait on making the holes for the top. But 3 out of 4 definitely isn't bad and now that I know how to do all this it shouldn't be too hard to add the top remaining holes. And here we are with the panels so far I think it looks really cool with the graphics and how it's semi-transparent it kind of ties everything together. I think this is looking really good so far. You can see where I have cutouts for USB ports, toggle switches, knobs, everything. They're going to be lighting controllers. A lot of stuff is going inside of this top panel and hopefully it's going to look even better when it's fully populated. Okay, in the last episode, I told you guys that the side panels for the frame were kind of my next obstacle, and this was something that I had been pondering for a while on how I was going to execute them. I went over a ton of ideas in my head, and ultimately, I figured out that the best method that I was going to try and do is reuse the old side panels, but maybe modify them quite a bit. I spent quite a lot of time trying to come up with a design that I liked, and I did want kind of like a sectioned into three parts but it took me a really long time to come up with something that I actually enjoyed. I kept playing around with it and I wasn't liking anything that I was coming up with. One of you guys left a comment on my last video saying that I should use just plastic or acrylic for the side panels which is a really good idea and that kind of was what I wanted to do to begin with. Since the side panel is no longer structural in any way it's more of just for design and so it could be made out of almost anything as long as it looked cool. Plastic also would have been a lot lighter but the only issue that I had with going with plastic was I needed a way to affix it to the frame. This would require some amount of screws. I guess I could have also used adhesive or velcro. That would have probably worked fine but I wanted to go something a little more robust. I can't use screws because they would screw into the frame and I have literally zero space on either side of the panels because the battery takes up all of the space. And that's why I ultimately decided to go with the original side panels that I had. These are steel and because they're steel I can weld them directly to the frame. This pattern I'm laying down here is not exact to the drawing that I originally made because it just had to be somewhat similar. It didn't have to be exact so this is all kind of freehand of making these little dips and indentations. Even though these extra little details were a lot harder to cut out as you'll find out later on in this video. I do think they were worth it because they definitely add to the aesthetics and as well as the overall look of the bike. Now that I had my pattern, I didn't quite trust the blue tape to hold up to all that cutting, so I'm using paint instead to lay down the markings. What I probably should have done is just given my design file to a place like Send Cut Send where you can just give them files, they'll send you in the mail back a complete cutout part, but I figured since I'm kind of doing everything on this build anyway, I might as well attempt it. I figured if I messed up too badly, that would at least be my backup plan and I could just have them made perfectly, but since I don't have a ton of experience with the angle grinder, I figured this would be a pretty big challenge for me. Even though I knew from the start that it was not going to look laser cut perfect because it is my hands and even though I'm using guides, it's still going to have that kind of imperfect human flawed touch. The first cuts I was making were coming out okay. It still wasn't anywhere near as good as I wanted it to, but I figured maybe I can just clean it up later, so let's keep going. I spent way too much time thinking about these panels, coming up with different options and ways and different materials that I could use, but at the end of the day, at some point, you just got to keep going and make some progress, even if it doesn't look as perfect as you'd want it. Although using this guide rod definitely helped me out a ton because there is no way that I would be able to make some of these longer runs this clean. 
Using the guide did take a lot more time because you have to keep clamping and reclamping with every new position. But it is worth it, it's totally worth it because otherwise I would have had some very wavy cut lines. For the corners and the smaller details I definitely didn't trust myself with a four and a half inch wheel so that's when I busted out the Dremel and I was going to use that to just kind of clean up everything I couldn't get to. And finally after a very long time I got the first out of six pieces cut out of this panel. And that was just a rough cutting out. That wasn't any of the details cut out. That wasn't any kind of finishing or sanding on the edges. That was just like get the major thing cut out. Thankfully the Dremel did allow me some pretty precise cuts so at least in that area I was able to clean things up and get them a little more crisp. Honestly these panels took me a lot longer than I ever anticipated. I thought they would take quite a while but not this long. All that time and I only got five more to go so let's burn through them. Oh, and the Dremel works surprisingly well, but there is one drawback to using these tiny little cutting discs. Yep, they fail, and they fail often. These things are very fragile and break pretty easily. They do make thicker and stronger discs, but I only had two of those, so I had a ton of these little thin ones and I just kept burning through them. I definitely think it's probably my technique and or I'm using the wrong disc for this application, but either way I was able to make it through. This here is actually day two of side panels and the second side panel went a lot faster than the first one. I think a lot of it had to do with the fact that I was just a lot more comfortable, I had experience. I knew what the tools were going to do and I was less afraid that I was going to ruin something. There really is no substitution for experience because no matter how much research or thinking about a task that you can do, until you actually do it, you are going to get so many more benefits from just doing it than thinking about it and researching it. To me, there's something definitely fulfilling about using my hands to create something. It is much different than just making something on the computer. At least for me, there is a calming effect of using your hands to build something, using your mind and your body together as one unit. I think it is a very different feeling than just kind of sitting at a computer and working on stuff. Which I also enjoy doing and I do a lot, probably more than even building stuff. And yes, I am aware that you're still using your body when you use a computer. You need to use your fingers to type and move the mouse with your arm, I am aware of that. And maybe it's just me and I am so enmeshed with computer worlds that it's almost like my mind, there's a disconnect between my body and my mind it kind of goes inside of this virtual world and leaves my body for the most part behind all I'm trying to say is that when I sit down for eight hours and work on building something inside of a virtual world through a computer it's a very different feeling I have at the end of the day as opposed to building something with my hands being outside all that and I don't know maybe it's just me maybe other people get an even more enjoyable fulfilling feeling when they're sitting at their computer all day but for me these are two very different things and it's hard for me to describe what that feeling is but all I can kind of keep coming back to is that it's like a synchronicity like my body and my mind are synced up together. I guess this is just my encouragement to you that if you have some project or some dream that you've had in your mind and you want to see it come to reality I strongly encourage you to do it. Anyway kind of went off on a tangent there but needless to say these side panels took me a very long time to complete and I was kind of worried even with the rough cuts that it wasn't going to look anywhere near as how I wanted it to come out. I was kind of disappointed with the progress so far but it wasn't until I hit these with a flap disc and the sandpaper that I finally saw how clean the edges actually were and these are far from perfect and they don't perfectly align. There are some spots where it's a little thinner but 
you're not really going to be able to tell. I think these came out way better than I ever imagined. Well, I'm not quite done yet, and as you guys know in my last episode, my laser was having some issues, but I was able to diagnose, troubleshoot, and find out how to fix it. So, I was able to make a new bottom panel for the controller, and it looks a lot better. It turns out the issue was the x-axis encoder was kind of dirty, so just cleaning that up made everything all right again. I do still need to bend the ends of this piece so that it's not just jutting out flat. It will be kind of conforming more and protecting more of the controller. But I am pretty happy with how this fully acrylic controller cover came out. I think it probably will hold up, but we'll have to see. I'm also very happy with how these side panels came out. The edges are much cleaner than I thought I'd ever be able to make. This is a small preview of how they're going to look on the frame. I do have to weld these on, but uh, that shouldn't be too hard and here's that piece that I actually provisioned and cut out and it is fitting a lot better. And I was all excited to get this mounted and bent down fully and then drill the holes and get that mounted on completely but then today I did kind of an oopsie doopsie. I Linus tech tipped it and pretty much yeeted this thing right out of my hands and it fell directly on the side of the panel and it broke. I'm not too bummed out about it because remember this was the panel that is kind of brown tinted and all the other ones are gray so if I redo this then I can make it in that same gray. I am pretty happy with the progress so far and I want to thank you guys so much for watching all the way to the end. I really appreciate it. We're probably about two thirds of the way done with a lot more aesthetic mods coming up so please stay tuned. Thanks again for watching and I will see you in the next one.